is your GPU not getting detected and you're not sure why? Today we are going to dive into a tricky fix on an NVIDIA A2000 where the issue came down to a missing enable signal and trust me, with no schematics available, this wasn't an easy one to crack. Hey everyone, my name is Fraser and welcome to GPU Solutions. In today's video, we're tackling an NVIDIA A2000 that wasn't being detected. What made this repair challenging is the lack of schematics or board view for the A2000. But after some digging, I found the problem was due to a missing 1.8 volts. Let's break it down. Like with any GPU that isn't being detected, I started by measuring the resistance on external voltage rails. Now, with this GPU not having an 8-pin connector, we are only going to check the 12V PCIe and the 3.3V rail. Everything looks good to me. No shots, no obvious signs of trouble. I also checked the back of the GPU at the shunt register and the inductor to see if it was open but everything looked fine to me. I then dismantled the GPU so I could get access to the front of the PCB. I took off the cooler and the thermal pads that were attached to the memory. I then checked the PCB under the microscope to find any visual signs of damage or burn or something that was missing. I could not find anything out of place. Now, without the schematics or board view, it makes this job more challenging. I then measured the resistance on the internal rails that were exposed after removing the cooler. I started off with the memory which showed about 50 ohms on both the inductor coils. Then I checked the 1.8 volt inductor and the PEX inductor and found no shorts there. Everything was looking good as normal. I then measured the 5 volt inductor and resistance was good there too. Next, it was time to measure the voltages. I connected my Tiffin box power supply and added some standoff so I could get the PCB laying flat on the mat. I turned on the power supply to check the power draw. This GPU was drawing about 0.01 amps, which is very low. I first checked the 12 volts and it was present. I then checked the 5 volts that was present too. I then checked the 1.8 volts and there was 0 volts. So no voltage was present at 1.8. So our fault was with the 1.8 volt missing. The 1.8 volt circuit is a crucial part of the GPU power structure. Without it, the GPU simply wouldn't work. So we had the core voltage missing and we also had the memory voltage missing because we didn't have 1.8 volts. So I switched back to the microscope to observe what was causing the missing 1.8 volts. I first started to check if our 5 volt VCC was present and it was there. I then checked if the 12 volt was present and that was there too. But it was missing the enable signal. When I traced back on the PCB, I found that an end gate on the PCB is missing. I think I may have overlooked it when I was observing it under the microscope during the start of the troubleshooting process. This is common with GPUs without the backplate since there's nothing to protect the back of the GPU. I assume that it may have been knocked off. Now, luckily, I have a similar A2000 donor board lying around and I borrowed the end gate from it. To remove the chip, I applied flux and some leaded solder so it would be easier to remove the gate from the board without applying much heat. Now, what is flux if you may ask? 
flux prevents oxidation and aids in flowing the solder easily. The flux I'm using is a Chinese MTech knockoff, which can be purchased from AliExpress. Now, to install the end gate on the PCB, I first applied some flux and added some leaded solder. The temperature is set at 420 degrees C and airflow is at 40%. I started off by heating the installation area and melted the solder. I then dropped the end gate in place. I gave it some final touches by adding some more flux and applying the iron to flow the solder evenly. The important thing after soldering any component is to clean off the flux so it looks neat. In this case, I use isopropyl alcohol and the one that I'm using is 99.9%. That's to brush off the flux. It's a good practice to inspect your work after the chip is installed. After the card has cooled, it was now time to test if a 1.8 volt was present. I connected my Tiffin box power supply and tested if the 1.8 volt was present. And yes, we now have 1.8 volts. I then checked PEX and it was present too. Finally, I checked the core voltage and all voltages required on the GPU were present. And this was good enough to boot. It was now time to test this GPU on the test bench and check if it would get detected. I installed the PCB on the test bench and booted the PC from the GPU. We got an image indicating that the GPU is now detected. It's now time to clean up the PCB. I use isopropyl alcohol and my magic cloth made of polyester fabric to make it look like nothing ever happened. I then applied new thermal paste and installed a cooler and the plastic shroud. It's now time to test this GPU on my test bench. So I loaded into Windows and waited for the drivers to install. I opened GPU Z to check if all information was filled in. I ran Fermark and Heavens to stress the GPU a bit and check if it would be stable. This repair shows how challenging it can be to troubleshoot a GPU when you don't have the schematics or board view available. It's very easy to overlook even if you are a seasoned repair technician. Without those resources, you got to rely on your experience and a systematic approach to isolate the problem. Let me know in the comment section if you ran into any similar issues with your GPU. I would love to hear about it. If you found this video helpful, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. If you like the content that I create, you can support this channel by hitting the join button or using the thanks button. Your contribution makes a big difference to me. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye for now. Cheers.